A Stuart Models beam engine rebuild. This is part four, finishing the crankweb. In the final part of the last episode, I showed the machining of this part of the crankweb. This is the most important sequence of events. Place the part in the chuck, make sure it's square, machine the front face. Once the front face is perfectly flat, centre drill it. I'd just like to mention that at this stage of the operation you must not remove the part from the chuck. That's because I've machined the front of the crank web, which is now parallel to the face of the chuck. It is vital in this operation to drill a hole and ream a hole in the centre of this crank web that's at a perfect 90 degrees to the face of the crank web. In this clip I'm using a twist drill which is one imperial size less than 3 8 As well as this hole in the crank web being perfectly at 90 degrees to its front face it needs to be dimensionally accurate. I need the hole to be 3 8 of an inch in diameter and that's why I'm using one imperial size less so I can use a reamer to accurately size the hole. But before I use the reamer I need to slow the lathe down. I'm switching it into back gear and as you can see the chuck is now revolving a lot slower. It's never a good idea to ream too fast because generally speaking the faster you go the larger the hole becomes. This may not be applicable in industry but as I said many many times to many many viewers this is not industry this is my home workshop and I know from experience that if I push the reamer through the hole too fast then the hole becomes a rattle fit on the shaft. And this is definitely not required when fitting a crank web to a crankshaft. Also the reamer that I'm using is a hand reamer and it has a slight taper so I'm making sure I go quite a long way through. That should be okay, it's not the best finish I've ever got in a hole in a piece of metal but it'll be fine for this job. Here's a shot of the entire assembly, the flywheel, the crankshaft and the crank web. I need to do some more machining on the crank web which I'll cover shortly. First of all though I'm just having a bit of a clean up of the front surface just to see what the finish is like from a piece of wet or dry sandpaper and it's okay. I cleaned up the outer part of the crankshaft in the outer part of my workshop as usual using my one inch belt sander and after rubbing the edges on some wet or dry sandpaper it's starting to look good. I need to make a mark one inch from the centre of the crankshaft to drill a hole for the crank pin. Here's a good tip though, don't use the edge of the ruler, put the ruler somewhere in the middle so it balances, that way you don't have to hold it in place. Because the gap from 0 to 1 is 1 inch and the gap from 6 to 7 is also 1 inch. This by the way is only a temporary mark to give me some idea of how it's going to look. I need to machine the other side of the crank web yet. Before I do though I'm having a look at the crank shaft. I'm a bit worried about this depression. Is that a drill that's broken off in there or is it just a hole that someone's drilled to put a grub screw in? To test this I used a very small twist drill in my Proxon motor tool and no it's not a broken drill. The next part of the job is a bit the wrong way around. I'm using some Loctite 603 which I'm applying to the crank shaft and I'm fitting the crank web but the wrong way around because I need to machine the inner part of the crank web. Once the Loctite 603 had cured, I fitted the crankshaft into my three jaw chuck. And it doesn't look like it's running all that evenly, but it will be okay for this job. I need to face across the front, or should I say the rear of the crank web, and this needs to be perfectly level with the crankshaft end. I'm taking very fine cuts, I don't want to stress out the part, although it's quite a strong joint with the Loctite, I set the final cut to also machine the end of the crankshaft just to tidy it all up. And this will also make the centre hole a bit smaller. A great failing in many models is that the centre of the crankshaft hole has been centre drilled far too large. On this crankshaft the centre hole is quite small, but on some models I've seen very very large centre holes. And if you look at a full size crankshaft on a full size steam engine, the centre holes don't seem to be that big relative to the size of the engine's crankshaft. Now it's time to cut the part of the crank web that holds the crank pin. Once again with this component light cuts are the order of the day, particularly as the part is stuck quite a long way out of the chuck and it's gunmetal and gunmetal is quite soft. Many cuts are needed to reduce it to its final dimension. The outer end of the crank web needs to be a quarter of an inch thick. I'm really pleased with this old casting because there's plenty of metal on it Often the problem with some modern castings is they don't contain enough metal because metal is expensive and you have to undercut 
to get through the outer skin. A quick check with the ruler tells me this is just over a quarter of an inch. This part is dimensionally accurate. The hole in the centre of the crank web is at 90 degrees to the front face, but the problem is the outer part of the casting is uneven, and I can't live with this. Some engineers don't bother, they will leave a casting as it was cast, but whenever a casting is rotating, I like it to look like it's rotating with some degree of concentricity. And that's why I'm taking many cuts to get through every part of the rough casting skin. I finish off the job using a file to remove the sharp edges. Now I need to drill a small hole for the crank pin. And for this I was going to use my rotary table, but then I remembered that I hadn't yet bolted it to the milling machine. So instead I'm going to show you an alternative method of drilling the hole for the crank pin. I could have fitted the forge or chuck and done it that way, but this is a simple method. I'm using a digital caliper to mark the position exactly one inch from the centre hole. And then, as always, I go through with the centre drill first. And I do apologise if things look like they're moving around. That's the drilling machine, it's not bolted to the floor yet. I was going to buy a new drilling machine, but funds don't run to it. The move has cost me a lot more than I thought it was going to do. So we'll probably bolt this particular one down to the floor, which will stop it wobbling about. Here I'm threading the hole and I didn't need to do this. I presume that the crank pin was threaded, which it is, but most of it is a parallel shank. So I ended up reaming this hole out to 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter to take the crank pin. I heated the part to break the Loctite seal and now we have just the crank web sat on the bench. And that's it, the crank web is now ready to fasten to the crankshaft permanently. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.